welcome to the Literaries Podcast. I'm Erin McPhail. And I'm Morgan Maddich. And Valentine's Day is tomorrow. Yay. I That's still crazy. have not put up my decorations. You haven't? No. I, I like I keep noticing like, oh, they're not up. I should go do that. And then I just don't. So what kind of decor do you be, have that you like haven't put target, up yet? Target dollar spot, like candles and like bullseye's trinkets. playground. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they call a dollar spot. Do, do they honestly call it that? Yeah, it's called Bullseye's Playground. That's the cutest thing I've ever they're heard. They're trying to like, yeah, they're trying to brand it in a certain way. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I don't have very much, but like I have things. So I guess uh-huh. they're going to be up for like late February instead of actually Valentine's Day. Yeah. If you can like just save them for next year and have a little treat for yourself when you. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I have Easter stuff that goes up. Exactly. Like... And Easter's early this year. So. Folks, True. when we're done with Valentine's, we're moving on yeah, into we might have to spring skip the and bunnies and all the cute Easter things. Yeah, I do. I have cute bullseyes playground Easter stuff, too, so I'm eager <laughs> nice. to get that up. Yeah. Well, Valentine's is tomorrow, and in honor of that, today we are going to be talking about our favorite couples and our favorite love stories of all time. Yay, we are we are romance readers. We love a romance. So we have we have a list here. If a book doesn't have romance, most of the time I'm like I don't want it. Like even if it's a thriller or a horror, I need the romance in it. Oh, for sure. Like And it doesn't have to be like the most basic of things. It can be a small romance and just like a subplot, but like give it to me. We need it. Yeah. I don't yeah, I don't need it to be like this on page thing. I just need the suggestion. The semblance, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we're gonna share with you our favorite couples and let us know at the end like who some of your favorite couples are because yes. we need to fangirl over yes. some some ships, if I you was will. Say we need recommendations, but we really don't. We have such we a have long so many, but like we will accept a recommendation if yes. if you've got one. <laughs> we will not turn our nose up at it. We will not. We will not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Why don't Who you wants- start with I'll Old start Faithful? Off. Okay. <laughs> this one. Okay. This. Honestly, none of y'all are going to be surprised that I say <laughs> this. <couple>. Obvious. <laughs> but they deserve it. And that's Claire and Jamie from Outlander. I, because... I quit <laughs> in the early seasons. So I'm you... going to have to trust you when you say they stay good. <laughs> they they do. I don't want to like <laughs> spoil for, for anyone um cuz we're still working through like the most recent season that's come out but you know they they go through so much i think compared to <laughs> I think that's an understatement. That's an understatement. I honestly don't even have the words for what they go through but compared <laughs> to other couples they literally go through and she keeps writing books. So much trauma, yeah, and there's still <laughs> some books that Diana Gabaldon is yet to release. I, my heart goes out to this couple, but, but they're my favorite because they, 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 their love supersedes all of that. Mm -hmm. Like time travel is just the best. Like when it's done right to add to a romance, it's like the best. This is a brief spoiler. So we'll mark it for anyone listening who has not read or Mm -hmm. watched Outlander. But when, Claire and Jamie are reunited after mm-hmm. like 20 plus ish years apart and she walks into the print shop and he's mm-hmm. there simply that's like I can't I'm done. I, I can't done. I can't and he sees her and like I'm pretty sure he like passes out because he's I you know so, he does he just collapses because he's so <laughs> shocked but like they truly are the definition of a relationship that stands the test of time and what i like about it is you see them go through being like a young couple versus being parents to like adult children and how they Mm -hmm. handle all the different phases of life um that you start seeing in the later seasons and how they still are able to maintain a healthy relationship despite all that now for a hot Mm -hmm. minute in season two when they're in france jamie was saying some stuff and going through a phase (laughs) i was like jamie you need to chill like it's yeah. giving talks. Yeah. No, but I, they I get, very, very yeah. vividly recall that. Yeah. But they get they get back on the horse, so to speak. <laughs> and I just, they deserve it. They deserve yeah, it. They do. <laughs> yeah. You lost me at like season three. So mm-hmm. like I don't mm-hmm. have any like 
more experience than that, but I've yeah. seen clips. I, I, I am someone who is very fluid about spoilers. I like them. I like to know where I'm heading. I'd rather, like, I'd, I have flipped to the end of a book before. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm that, mm-hmm. I'm that crazy. So, like, I've, I've looked up clips of, like, the later seasons. Like, I have not watched them, but I've seen little snippets and, like, they're just chef's kiss. Some of you can't, Jamie's you cannot. lines, like, they are the most, some of, like, I think the most romantic things a man can say to a oh, woman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You they had genuinely... Outlander playing at your wedding. <laughs> yeah, Outlander theme song was playing at the, I didn't hear it, but it was playing at our cocktail hour. I was there to hear it. My head snapped up and I was like, oh, this is a I know wedding. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was adamant. I was like, the uh, string duo playing the cocktail hour that was in their repertoire and i was like yes please please include I was that like, you and your mother are responsible for this <laughs> yeah. and he go too honestly he's he's into the show as well i love so. i love that he's into it too that you that yeah. you roped him into the history oh yeah no he loves history so he's he's here for it but would you like to share the first on your list i would Let's move this it is, along <laughs> this is kind of out of the blue for historical me but this is like genuinely one of my favorite series which is so weird to say because it's contemporary shock mm-hmm. pause for pause for shock and awe but shock and awe contemporary. <laughs> but it is the gallagher girls series by ali carter i grew up on this series i remember in sixth grade like remember like class libraries mm-hmm. yeah i we had like my sixth grade teacher was my homeroom, and then we had another sixth grade teacher we would switch with, and she was, like, my science teacher, and yeah. I would have to go into her room and borrow her, like, copies of the series because my teacher didn't have it. So uh, I remember, okay. like, being, like, a silent reading hour, raising my hand, like, can I go get the next book? And, like, having to g- walk across the hall and go get it. But I adore the main couple in the series, Cammie and Zach. They are, like, so real, and that's, like, one of my – compliments for the series is that like they start as like very young teenagers and grow Mm -hmm. to be like 18 year old like adults and going through very adult things Mm -hmm. and as they grow the series grows and the maturity level grows and so does their relationship like they start as like these awkward teens trying to like navigate like first love and like how does that work for them and then as like the plot ramps up and things get like very serious and like there's terrorist organizations and like a whole host of spy shenanigans. I should say that this is a spy series. I don't think I mentioned that, but that's very important. Um, the relationship ramps up as well, and it's it becomes very serious and very like they just love each other and they're like willing to do anything for each other while the, like the world is under threat. It's like this very like supportive undercurrent where they can rely on each other, and I just love that. Like it's just. It's just a very real series for being, like, a, a fun spy adventure. And, like, it – honestly, it holds up. Like, I would recommend anyone read it, even though it's, like – it's kind of classified as a middle grade. It's, like, a Disney book series. It mm-hmm. gets very mature at the end. Like, there is, like, out of sight, out of mind, crazy. Out of sight, out of time, I think. The, all the titles are puns, which we love that. We love puns. And we do thoughts. love a pun. Is he also a spy, this Zach? He is a spy. Okay. The, the setup for their romance is that they go to this girl's school for okay. spies. and there they go is to the a, boys' school. <laughs> there's a boys' school, school for spies that they did not know about, and he's like a transfer placement in their school. Oh, and they're like, there's a boy. There's a boy okay. in the school. Okay. Nice. That's cute. It's very cute we it's just it starts off cute and then it like becomes like a very mm-hmm. adult like yeah, relationship kind of i would love to have together yeah 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 it's Aww. just it's just a great all-around series they're very short and sweet but like they're it the progression just watching like i've never seen a series do that where like if it starts off as middle grade it kind of gets to like upper ya by the mm-hmm. end because mm-hmm. the characters are growing but this one for sure does and it's like one of the coolest things i've ever seen to like read them all like one after the other and be like okay this escalated very quickly (laughs) from one book to the next (laughs) well Well, would you like to share your next one the next one and this one's probably true for you too but Belle and the Beast slash Prince Adam they're just you know what I'm like I'm sick of the haters that are like I'm sick of the haters Stockholm Syndrome it's not that's not what that is it's not it's different okay 
it's just it's, <laughs> it's different. different and honestly like shout out to the original fairy tale um mm-hmm. cuz like although i love like the cartoon you know that's still a retelling of mm-hmm. the original and just like the dynamic and the themes mm-hmm. the original of the I original can fix him girl yeah, she yeah. she is the blueprint <laughs> of i is. can fix him but i just the whole theme of looking beyond appearances mm-hmm. and falling in love over time is just so beautiful it's timeless. and timeless it's a tale as old as time <laughs> my friend is rhyme yeah it is it is <laughs> um <laughs> and i just feel like every there's so many beauty and the beast retellings in ya literature especially everyone needs to like go be thank it go thank the disney movie but also like go thank the mm-hmm. original mm-hmm. og fairy tale itself um Mm -hmm. because that to me is like such a pillar of of this of this type of story and this type of couple yeah i was obsessed there was one did you read wendy mass books by Mm -mm. chance i don't think so no she was like when i was growing up she was like the it author and like children's Mm -hmm. lit and she had like a series of fairy tale retellings and the, the beauty and the beast one i was like absolutely obsessed with like uh-huh. I have read, I read it probably, I would say fifty times in a row. Oh my! And it was gosh. like a big book for me at that point. It was like three hundred pages, which was like mm-hmm. monumental when everything else was like two two fifty. So I was like, like this is a huge book, and then I just kept reading it and was kept it reading set, it. Set like in a fairy tale world, or it was, was set it... in a fairy tale world? It was like it was definitely a twist, but like I remember. Like the main love interest was like into alchemy, and it felt like okay, it felt like different. Like it was like her own. Like it was the first time I read a retelling that wasn't like it was like word for word the Disney movie. Yeah, she put her own. She put her own spin on everything. Yeah, and like I just remember loving the main love interest and like uh, like the main character. I was like, she's so me. I'm not like other girls. (laughs) Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> it was it was that phase of my life but i gotta i still have it on my shelf i'm gonna have to like get it out the cracked it. spine the like Do dog yeah. pages and Aww. reread it it's a well-loved book it's very well loved well do you want to share your next one working our I way will. through this one i will say suzanne enoch is one of my favorite authors like and she so quickly became my favorite author mm-hmm. but i was just like randomly offered an arc for something in the air and i was like okay i'll read it like it's a historical mm-hmm. oh my gosh it is like one of the best historicals i've ever read wow like ever High praise <laughs> and the thing that i love the most about it is that not only does it feel like real history and like it's a real love story happening within history but mm-hmm. the love stories are so well crafted and so real and it doesn't feel like a romance book where you're like okay there's a third act breakup and you can like chart the structure Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's like it feels like a real thing and emmeline i think that's how you say it it might be it might be some other english pronunciation it's either emmeline or emmeline yeah emmeline emmeline and william from something in the air which they start off as a married couple a marriage of convenience Mm -hmm. and you sort of see the progression of them like they were friends before and they kind of like exist in this like symbiotic like relationship where they're each getting something they want and it's you know not about romance and then they the the setup for this book is genius in my opinion uh they told like their patriarch that they had children and they do not so they have to find two little children from an orphanage and like make them be a little lord and be lady no- noble yeah yeah be Aww. noble and in doing so, they grow closer together. So, like, I'm and it's assuming just... they don't have kids because they have not like slept together, and it's very. I think they're... they might have once, and then they were like, "Okay, never again." And oh, then okay, and so they, they just kinda... like it's been like set three, to live three, their separate three-ish lives. Five years. I don't remember. Got it. How long? But it's been a while of them just kind of like existing together and and furthering yeah. like their social calendar together, and like mm-hmm. that's the it's like a business. It's relationship, a business thing. Which yeah. I love a marriage of convenience. It's like the best trope, in my opinion. But yeah. just like seeing them having to like parent these two children, like that's the ultimate test of a I, relationship. I don't want you to spoil, and you don't have to spoil. But I hope mm-hmm. that at the end of this story, that somehow they uh, end up like formally adopting these kids. I don't or think find- that's a spoiler because it's a happy ending romance book. Of course, they adopt the children. Okay, and they are okay. a big happy family. But Good. I was like, that's what 
<laughs> I need. I don't know if that's what happens, but that just makes it sweeter to me. It's and shout out to a couple that's like adopting and they're not. I know. I love know. that. Like a historical adoption. Like, exactly. That's really not seen, and a lot of times it's about like, oh, we must carry on the bloodline. But for them, it's you know, it's it's just so fun. The antics of it. Like I feel like a lot of comedy books just don't gel with me. Where it's like Same. around like the humor can be dry or like really punny or just like not not for me Mm -hmm. this one like the antics are like genuinely funny to me and like the historical quips and everything it's like the best rom-com and i would also recommend suzanne enoch's other book every duke has his day about a dog switch a dog napping incident where a couple is put together through uh, there's there's children and dogs so pick pick your poison (laughs) but i i think suzanne enoch is a master of writing like believable grounded romance and historical books and it's just like it it warms my heart like there's no other way to put it that it's just it's just warm and fuzzy and nice to read about so highly 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 recommend she better be coming out with a new book soon because like i am <laughs> already starving i need more i need more punny titles i love them so much well the next one on my list so this is a is a movie i'm not aware if there's any like literature equivalent to this but mm-hmm. uh it's a movie when harry met sally can i, I be watched... a bad film person <laughs> have you I've I've never seen, seen it, seen it. I've, I've heard such good things watch, and it. I've never... watch it i watched it for the first time in middle school totally went over my head i did not care i was not invested <laughs> but i rewatched it in college and... this is the one with billy crystal right mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah and the sweater i've seen the, yeah, the, the sweater yeah the, yeah the big chunky sweater mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and this movie it it hits different when you're older because you appreciate it more and i did mm-hmm. not like get it until i was in love myself <laughs> but then mm-hmm. it like clicked can't relate <laughs> you'll still you'll still appreciate it I promise. <laughs> um it is just the sweetest love story mm-hmm. and you know these people go from like college grads and their friends and they kind of always have a thing for one another and Mm -hmm. like i don't i don't want to spoil it in case people haven't seen it because it's worth the watch but the ups and downs of Mm -hmm. how they finally get together Mm -hmm. is just one of the sweetest most sincere realistic things i just it's just heartwarming it makes me cry every time uh, there's a scene at the end that takes place on New Year's Eve with like a I've, really, a really that, famous yeah. monologue. It just sends me every time. And, you know, I think it's it's one of those movies that is worth rewatching at different phases mm-hmm. in your life mm-hmm. because it's going to take on a new meaning every time. Just what they what they work through. From what I've heard and like seen in like film compilations, mm-hmm. it's not only like a good movie. Like where it's like a good couple, but it's like a good movie composition wise, and it like is. Yeah. it's held up as like a, an actually, yeah, you know, like if well we're made like, film yeah, like, c- cinematically and not just like oh the romance. No, I think it's very well done. Uh, if we if we just ignore the romance for a little bit, yeah, I I've heard good things. Not me going to watch it immediately after go watch recording. it. Do it. It's a great <laughs> time to to do it. Maybe I finally very, need to to Festive. man up and do it mm-hmm. yeah do it it's it's really sweet well my next one is not as sweet there's there's a lot of downs more so than ups but it's camilla and billy from daisy jones on the six specifically the book the show i think kind of dropped the ball on them just a bit but just how much can you put a couple through and have them still end up together? like how 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 I just don't understand, but that's I it's think on my the, list for this year. I don't. Got, I'm don't, not going to spoil, spoil it. me. Don't spoil me. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil it, but okay. they are the emotional core of the book, mm-hmm. and just the the way she treats like a real relationship affected by so many outside influences, mm-hmm. and just the strength of specifically Camilla. I think Camilla is just such a good example of a strong female character who like. She doesn't take shit, but she, you know, feels very deeply and she, you know, gets through things in a very like adult manner and manages. She basically manages the relationship and she it's just 
I, I hate that the show like kind of dropped the ball on her character because she is what makes the book so good. She is the linchpin of everything, but specifically Billy and Camilla's relationship. She just, just the effect she has on not only Billy, but everyone around her. It's, it's just great. I can't, I can't spoil it. I wish I could say like, you know, the lines I want to say and, and the things that she says, but Once I, I've I will, read it, we I will need leave, like I will leave it. To, yeah. To an update to this, spoilers. but yeah. just paying attention to her and like zeroing in on her in the context of Billy and her relationship. It's just like, she, she's just a force, a powerhouse. And it's just, that's like, I could never be her. And she is such a good, strong person. Like I imagine like myself in her shoes and mm-hmm. I would just like I would have broken 20 times during the course of her story. And yet she's so strong and so resilient and, you know, carries their relationship and makes sure like it is where she wants it, which is so like admirable for, you know, as as a woman to see like, OK, she wears the pants in this relationship and she's making sure the man does not fall off the wagon completely and mm-hmm. die. So, <laughs> yeah, just when you read it, it's like you're going to love it. You're going to love it. You gotta I can't read wait. It, I'm, I'm so Hurry excited. up. It's it's Get on it. my list. It's on my list. I've got to go through it con- Move it chronologically. up the TBR. Move it up the TBR. No, it's, I have it on my list for like June, I think. Yeah. And another, it's so cool that the story, the story is told in interviews because it's about this 70s rock band that broke up mysteriously and now they're going back and telling their story and which makes for a really cool plot point of like, there's so many conflicting viewpoints Mm -hmm. and like there's so many viewpoints about Camilla and Billy's relationship and like outside viewers people that were like alongside them so it's like getting to see like all the different like anecdotes about it and deciding what you think is true is like a really cool part of the book so I love them I think I think it's it's one of the great new Mm -hmm. like fiction relationships that have been written and it'll be talked about for a long time so Mm -hmm. The poor, the poor show didn't win any war- <laughs> very many awards this season, but it was up against some stiff competition. Hmm. Well, the last one on my list, I was not expecting to, to put this <laughs> on my list, um, is Iris and Roman from Divine Rivals. I'm I so happy you read this off book. reading this book because I thought, oh, you know. I, I had so much hype about it, and I was like, yeah. I don't know if it's going to live up to the hype. I liked the idea of kind of like World War One aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't feel like that's done a lot in general. And no, like I've YA never seen it before this. Book. A lot of times it veers World War Two and adult. Um, but this book, like, kind of, I don't, I think <laughs> it's her writing style. I, this couple, this book came in and like got a chokehold on me. Uh huh. And it's so good. They, they do so fall good. in love quite fast. Um, mm-hmm. And I'll try not to spoil. Uh, mm-hmm. I have not read the sequel. They fall in love very quickly. Their relationship moves along very quickly. But it worked for me because something about this dynamic between them just had this wistful, mm-hmm. we're in love and the world's going we're getting to carried hell away. in a handbasket. Yeah. We're getting carried away. And this, I think there's a little bittersweet element to it because they're journalists in the middle of this war and they know that nothing is really is really mm-hmm. guaranteed for them mm-hmm. and so just underneath the romance there's kind of always this like bubbling sense of like something could upend this it could upend our lives mm-hmm. and the world as we know it and it just left me with just like i don't know it was just it hit the her spot writing for style me. is magical I think, I think that's part of it i think is her writing style it just felt lyrical and just like yeah not she like just whimsical knows how to string and a like a sentence together yeah not like whimsical in alice in wonderland way or anything but mm-hmm. like wistful in that like it felt this book felt like nostalgic for me in a yes way. Yeah, i don't exactly know how, you know i don't i can't i can't describe it any it's one of those that. books where it's so good that like it defies words like you can't really like yeah and i was why so you love it, i had but been it's just, so hesitant and i was not expecting to love this couple and what they've gone through but it it still felt realistic too despite that like their own personal struggles so love them i'm so excited to read the (laughs) second one and see what the heck happens Uh, oh yeah you left off a bit of a cliffhanger bit a bit a bit for lack of i don't want to spoil but love them love her writing Mm -hmm. style i 
aside from from Iris and Roman as a couple, I want to go back and read her backlist. Mm-hmm. She yeah, shout I've, out I have to not, Rebecca Ross. I, yeah, shout out to Rebecca Ross. I have not read her backlist, but I have read Divine Rivals, and I love it very much. And I trust that she has a, she has a couple adult books out, which I think yeah. would be really mm-hmm. good with her writing style. I think so. And I too. think I think they're set in Scotland. They are. I, I don't. I think so. <laughs> I've already. Had, <laughs> she's I've already, already. She's already added to cart. I, I have done what Morgan and I do. This is a very quick interlude. Mm-hmm. When we like get hooked on an author, we like we look at their Devour website. Them. We look at yeah. their backlist. <laughs> I want to read interviews about them. Like I want to see what their process is like. Mm-hmm. I think we're just well, we know we're weird, but <laughs> I think that's <laughs> like do. a writer bit in us. We can't just take it as like, oh, that was the book. Like we want to see, like, okay, how did mm-hmm. this come together in the larger picture? Yeah, how do we and, condense this and make ourselves mm-hmm. able to do this? Yeah, it's almost like a self, uh, like prophesying, like thing a crash, like, yeah, like mm-hmm. a crash course in this author and how do we, yeah, yeah. take their skills as our own. Exactly. <laughs> well, do you want to share your your next one? That was my last one. So I think you're down to two left. Yes. My next one is James and Cordelia from The Last Hours, specifically barring Chain of Thorns. We delete Chain of Thorns from the canon and like the beginnings of their relationship is so good. You have not read the series, but no, they, I'm, I'm they so are... intimidated by the number of books in, in this world. Yeah. I, it in, scares yeah. me. <laughs> I don't I have not read the whole Shadowhunter series. I've only read the historical ones. Mm-hmm. And I've had the misfortune of coming across Chain of Thorns. Um their relationship is like propped up as you know the couple in like a multi POV book that's like the destined one where yeah. it's like they are the main couple and like they are going to get together. They're propped up as that from the very beginning. I think from the first chapter, basically. Where Mm -hmm. it's, like, they are these, you know, childhood friends that have grown up together and, like, their families are very closely intertwined. And, Mm -hmm. like, Cordelia has a like, unmistakable crush on James and he cannot see he is in love Mm -hmm. with another sort of thing. Where it's, like, but just just the ups, unrequited, the ups and downs of their relationship is just... Like, it's so dramatic, and that's why I love The Last Hours, because it is peak drama, and it is, mm-hmm. like, it is, like, a soap opera, like, a gossip girl in Edwardian London, and added we fantasy. We love that, just hearing that, I'm fighting. like, yes. <laughs> But their relationship is, like, it's so sweet and earnest, and, like, like you said, it's, like, some of the lines that James says, it's, like, okay, you read so many books, and I love you so much for that. <laughs> like, it's very poetic and very, like... It feels like destiny. It feels like fate. It feels like mm-hmm. they're meant to be together. And like the forces pulling them apart is just like they are like they are no match for these like mortal things that are like trying to pull them apart. They are meant to be together. And it's like I that's why the ending felt like so weird to me. And like some of the stuff Cordelia does in the later books, it's like not good. And it's like just just early them is like so sweet and so earnest, specifically at the beginning of Chain of Iron. Where it's like, I won't spoil, but like they're together in some capacity. And it's mm-hmm. like just them coexisting together and, and them, you know, being a couple without realizing that they are a couple is like so, it's just so earnest and sweet. And some of the like fluff scenes we get with them is just like, the, those are like my comfort scenes where it's like, you guys are so cute. It's like, you just are so cute. And yeah. I have to, I have to shout it from the rooftops how much I love them before everything went just awful. <laughs> And then well, you're, I, I know more. who these are. I know these. I have I am gonna have to fight not to spoil because like there is so much there's so much that goes into this couple. This is another one that's absolutely worth the hype. It's one of my favorite series, if not like top three. It's like it's really up there. It's one of the best written couples of all time. Jude and Cardin from The Cruel Prince. You knew they were gonna be on here. You knew. <laughs> Everyone knew. But like we've talked about like really sweet couples and like really like fluffy couples Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they are not a fluffy couple (laughs) and yeah they it's like when i say enemies to lovers i mean enemies to lovers like some people slap that label on like you know rivals or like people that just mildly dislike each other no 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 no. like the first like 10 chapters he throws her in a lake (laughs) like like that yeah that sort of that sort of vibe (laughs) that sort of vibe from them but their their adversarial relationship that just blossoms into a romance and like the tension of like this guy I ha- I hate this guy so much why can't I stop thinking about him mm-hmm. that sort of thing is like 
I love enemies to lovers, but like they just do it differently. And they, it's like, it's such a strong part of the book and their relationship and their like, but they're like basically partners in crime for like most of the books. Mm -hmm. So it's like as much as they like quote unquote hate each other. And it's like the idea of like mistaking hate for or mistaking love for hate and that sort of thing. The, the connection of them is just so cool. And it's like, they're just a power couple. They're just a power mm-hmm. couple. And I love them. And I hate that you have not read the later books because, oh boy, it gets, it yeah, gets I so did, good. I and did so read tense. the first. I can't, I can't get behind the tail. Carden having a tail. <laughs> I, I, I you try. Kind of, you can kind of like, I, I do not see it for like half the books, but like sometimes it comes up in a scene and it's, it's like, oh, you. No, yeah, and the fact that like, like oh, he has a tail. It's been described as like the tail like moving in accordance with his emotions. And I haven't gotten to the I, romance scenes with the tail yet. I'm simply done. <laughs> like, I'm sorry if I was. Di- I, I again, I read the first book many years ago, <laughs> and I think Holly Black is a fabulous writer, despite the tail. <laughs> because if I was dating a guy. And he had a tail and he took off his clothes and he had a tail. I would exit that chat. Okay. Some of some of the other <laughs> siblings he has has like hooves and like hooves. spikes on their fingers I'd, I'd and like the horns. Then, it's like than like uh, being with like a the Mr. Tail is the lesser type. of you. <laughs> Mr. Tumnus. No. Imagine you're laying in bed with one with the hooves and you feel their hooves rub against your feet. Abs- I would nope. absolutely I'm- kill myself. I'm just exiting that chat. I guess I would take the tail not. in that scenario. I, but. Yeah, the tail is kind of like able to be hidden. Like you don't have to acknowledge the tail unless the tail is like visible. Mm-hmm. And I, like I usually like I don't know how I feel about the tail. I think it's like a complicated, you know, inner thing of like I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> I just bought a pin where the tail swings back and forth. No. Yes, I did. I did I'm buy that. I'm so done. I can't believe that. I have a plushie that. of him with the tail. Oh and it's got a little God. tuft of fur on the end. Not the tuft of fur, like a lion. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. And I think it, like I think she said it's like they are that way because they are like so magical or something. I forget uh-huh. the explanation. There is an explanation for the tail. Okay. It's not just okay. chilling. Okay. But like... <laughs> at least yeah. there's an explanation for why. yeah yeah because that would be my next question one you have a tail too why 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 tell me about this the way they introduce it is so funny like where her sister is like yeah w- like we went swimming and he definitely has a tail and she's like that's stupid i'm and so like, glad he for sure has a tail and her sister was right <laughs> Jude so is a dumb. saint for putting up with the tail. I yeah, will say she it. deserves an award. I like. I don't remember much, but like, she deserves something. She she deserves a prize for that because I would say she gets a prize. Okay, Does I she, know like, how the book become end. supreme ruler of. I'm not saying anything. The little this sh- of the kingdom. Is this fairy. on your TBR for this year? No. Why? Because I just I so I like the if first you d- book. Okay, you it do just one thing for me. me. You read the you read this at least the second book. The second book is like a master class in political fantasy hmm. okay. and putting romance in there. Well, it's that, like, you that would has love me it. a little more intrigued. <laughs> you would love it. Like like I'm someone who loves politics and fantasy books, but specifically like fairy politics and like mm-hmm. y- and combining that mythos with politics with romance. And just I, Jude is one of my favorite characters of all time. So like anything she does is going to be like a hit for me. Mm-hmm. But specifically like book two is like one Why of the, is... my favorite books of all time. I will ask this mm-hmm. and then <laughs> I'll shut up. <laughs> Why does she always Why is she always portrayed as like having her hair and these horn looking? What's she that about? It. She had it in like a pivotal scene in the first book and then she like kept wearing it. But why the horn shape of her hair? She's from Fairyland. I don't know what they like, do there. I just, I'm like, at least she doesn't have hooves. Yeah, true. <laughs> it's just, true. just her hair. Like, I, I have done the answers. hair horn style, a la Jude, and it is not hard to do. You've so done for it? her and her. Yeah, I've tried it. <laughs> did you? Did it work? I was, I was gonna go to book con like the year, the year COVID happened. We had like book con all lined up, ready to go, and um, you know the. <laughs> No one could travel, so Book yeah. Con got canceled and then canceled forevermore. There is no more Book Con. But I was going to cosplay Jude for Book Con, and I didn't I, get to. I didn't So I was practicing my horns. I love 
I love that. I was going to buy like Amazon like fake horns and like wrap hair extensions around it. I'm so and done. And kind of cheat it. <laughs> yeah, I have the whole That's thing. I have, like, I have like her crest, her family crest on the patch. It's kind of just sitting there because I didn't get to sew it on. That is iconic. I, I love Jude so much. You you underestimate just like if my female characters can be like half as great as she is, like I will die happy. I love and that. You, but you don't know that because you haven't read the we'll later see. books. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe You've I'll see it. what I can do. I'll see what you I can do. Move some <laughs> stuff around the TBR. Find a way. Because, like, honestly, Wicked King, at the very least, is, like, chef's kiss. We'll see. We'll see. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> You've got it. This, I'm calling in my, my, my best friend favor. You have okay. to move this one up. You get one from me, <laughs> and I'll okay. move this one up your TBR. Nice. I'll see what I can do. I'm scared of what book you'll demand of me, though. <laughs> I know. Now you've given me options. Now I can start thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Which, it's going to be like a horrific horror book that it's going to keep me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll oh, see. it's fine. It wasn't that scary. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think that's it for all of our favorite couples for today, but please let us know who your favorite couples are, whether that be from books or movies or shows, uh, whatever This you one has have. sequel potential because mm-hmm. we have so many. There's so many. There's so like, many. Even like compiling this down, I was like, okay, I got to cut a couple. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't say these people. Like there's too we'll many. here all day. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I've been trying to like stop repeating myself with the podcast and like maybe not say care of all again and like maybe like yeah, give, bring give some titles. series some breathing room mm-hmm. and like actually show like i read more than three books yeah so yeah. i tried to like bring some outside influence into this episode mm-hmm. with some more obscure couples and then i have like cassie claire on there so like i failed that mission but <laughs> <laughs> well let us yeah. know your favorite couples Thank you, as always, for tuning in and listening, and we hope that you guys have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Wonderful Valentine's Day. Marin is representing the couples. I'm representing the singles. The singles. (laughs) We hope both groups have have a very nice Valentine's Day. Yeah. Just a fun little celebration. Get some chocolate covered strawberries. If you really want to be our Valentine, you should Mm -hmm. rate and review the podcast. It helps so much. It helps so much. We will love you forever. We'll be your Valentine and you'll we be will. ours. <laughs> we'll make you little cards and send them to you. We will. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.